the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the inhabitants of the earth be silent before him. The Lord is in his holy sanctuary. Let all the creatures of the world be silent before him. Our most high God, glory be to your holy name this morning that you have gathered us all from far and near to be in your holy sanctuary. For our bodies are the sanctuary in which we live. We believe it's not the buildings, but it's our bodies. Therefore, we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, as a living sanctuary before thee. The Lord, your presence will dwell in us at this moment of time. That you will saturate every area, every department, every organ of our body. That our organs will be before thee. To be used by you, O oh God. Our thinking organ, our mental organ, our imaginative organs shall be saturated that we can understand your word that is about to come forth, Lord. With agony in our hearts, with tears all around our, our faces, with sleepless nights, with nightmares, with horrible dreams, Lord, we bring ourselves before thee. The Lord, dry us up with anything that is in us. The Lord, you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, with your word. Let your Holy Spirit be like a water springing from underground, feeding us. Amen. Let your Holy Spirit be like showers of blessing from on high. Be poured unto us. Let your Holy Spirit be like a mighty wind blowing around us that we can feel your divine presence in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being in us now. That wherever we are, our bodies will saturate the atmosphere. Our children, our families surrounding us shall hear your word. And your word will be a source of encouragement and comfort to everyone. Lord, use us to your own glory this morning. Thank you for all that, Lord, you have done for us so far. Let this moment be yours now again. Take absolute control in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless God for this morning and bless everybody actually for being such a faithful and committed children of God who are hungry to hear God's word, who are hungry to participate in the service of God. I give all respect to everybody here. And those who cannot make it for many reasons, I still have good respect for them. And I pray that they will not be in a position that the enemy may use them. I pray that the Lord will stretch forth his hands upon everybody, that we shall all live under his canopy. Till we see each other again in in a via Bridge Place I call till death. But meanwhile, this is why the Lord has brought us so far. I thank you all for collaborating. I thank those who have uh, uh, worked hard to make this uh, platform successful. Everybody is doing his or her best to make sure that everything is working perfectly and we are seeing the perfection now 
Amen. Thank you all and God bless you. Without wasting time this time, I'm not going to talk much. If I say I'm not talk much, it costs me to talk much. So I just want to preach the word of God very shortly to everybody. I want us to open our Bible to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16, the verse 16 to 17. Deuteronomy chapter 16, the verse 16 to 17. Let's hear the word of God. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. Amen. We will come back to the scripture, which will be the main topic later. Uh, we leave. I, I promise myself that I will not mention the word coronavirus or COVID-19. I will not mention again. I promised, I, I was fighting that I don't want to preach laid by the circumstances surrounding us. I want God to give me a word outside coronavirus. Uh, I don't want to preach from sensation, from emotion. I was asking God alone, give me a word that will have nothing to do with coronavirus. But all along, the Lord is taking me through the situation in which we are today. So I just have to respect what the Lord is leading me to. This was confirmed yesterday morning devotion by Deacon Dennis in his word of exhortation. It was totally confirmed yesterday by our deaconess when he was preaching from Psalm 48, 2 and 52. We are, I say, God, that is your will. So let it be done. We live in a time of great uncertainty, fear of what the future might, might hold. Personally, I see many dreams, I have many dreams which is telling me the future is going to be blur. I saw families dividing a piece of meat so that they can eat. I see people who are doing well begging for food. I say, God, you reveal to redeem. Therefore, my prayer is that God should uphold the situation in a way that we will not live in scrambles. But God is going to protect each and every one of us. That no matter how the economy will go down in the future, because uh, the virus will, will definitely be over. But the consequences that is leaving behind is going to be disastrous. But God is going to protect all of us. We live in such a fear now. In fact, I remember... On the 12th of February this year, I was having a, a lunch with my co-workers and uh, we were describing when uh, uh, they say the, the whole uh, Wuhan city of China has been uh, uh, set apart. They have been quarantined. And one of my workers was saying, that is 60 million people, the whole population of Italy. Can we just imagine that the whole of Italy will be quarantined? It's not possible. That was 12th of February. I remember very well. If you asked me a couple of months ago, I would never predict. Or from that, day, I would, no, none of us was predict that the whole 60 million people over of the whole Italy one day, just about... One and a half months from that day, or it was five weeks from that day we were discussing this matter, the whole of Italy will be quarantined. Nobody knows this. We have seen this kind of scares before. We have seen the Spanish flu. We have seen the H1N1 virus. We have seen the SARS. We have seen Ebola. But all of these things contain some scare and death. But none is like this one we are seeing now. How many will be infected? We don't know. How many will die? We don't know. Even though every year the regular flus, we know that everybody has flus. The flus take 10,000 of people away from the world. 
but somehow this COVID-19 is scary because of the unknown element, because we don't fully understand it, we don't yet have vaccine or anything to it. When you feel unsettled and safe, we all need help. Yesterday, our deaconess was uh, taking us and he talked about Obadiah 17. That confirms that God really pushed me to preach on what I'm going to preach today. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. When you talk about Zion, we talk about the city of David, a place which is safe. And it is not a place that lies in the valley. It lies on a hillside, on a hilltop. It's called Mount Zion. And each time we talk of Mount Zion, I always think of the 15 pilgrimage psalms. The other day, in one of my messages, I said we have 15 psalms that is used for pilgrimage. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, the verse 16 to 17, as we read, if it's the verse 16, the Bible says that three times a year, the Lord told the people of Israel that they should appear before him in a place which he shall choose. In the feast of the unleavened bread, in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And in this feast, they call upon the name of the Lord. They created opportunity for the Jewish community to reaffirm their commitment to the covenant of God. In this meeting, they strengthen their self identification as a nation, as a religious community, and entrenched the sanctity of Jerusalem, a place where the temple stood in a religious consciousness of the people. When they gather together, when they go together in Zion, when they go together in, in the temple of, of God, in Jerusalem, they go there three times in a year. And they identify themselves with the people of the world, they are the children of God, and that they are committed to the covenant that the Lord has, uh, is having with them. They, they, they strengthen themselves within themselves. So when uh, I think of this, I think of our church as a Christian family, where we always, once in a year, we go to the mountains to seek the face of God. And uh, uh, the Lord showed me how the whole world now is trying to move towards the mountain. Everybody now begins to understand that there is no power anywhere. Because this sickness, this virus, no, no values. He knows no frontiers, no barriers. He's taking presidents, prime ministers, he's taking prince, he's taking princes, he's taking first ladies, he's taking ordinary people, he's taking poor people, he's taking rich people, he's taking doctors, he's taking medical staff, he's taking scientists, he's affecting everybody, killing everybody. Yesterday, unfortunately, we have the first Caribbean who, who died in front of this. It's unfortunate, we hear Great people of God, great men who are passing away. Politicians are passing away, are being affected by this sickness. So everybody begins to understand that there's only one person who controls the world. It's God. Now everybody is looking unto the Lord. Everybody is moving to Zion to go and seek deliverance. To go and seek holiness, to seek sanctity, to seek uh, uh, to seek holiness, to seek healing, to seek deliverance, so that we can possess the possessions the Lord has given unto us. I see us that we are all in the valley. Of Biela. 
and it's like the bus has dropped us there and we have to walk towards the mountain Zion which is the place we have for our camp meeting it's like we are walking through Okiepo Inferiore and we are walking climbing slowly with fatigue through Okiepo Superiore towards Gralia where we can go to a place where the Lord has sustained us for years to call upon his name because upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and the people of old where they are moving towards this pilgrimage three times in a week in, in a year they sing hymns and as I was saying the Psalms in the Bible they are the hymns of the people of old so one person will raise a song and of them they will take it they will sing to encourage themselves they will sing as they are climbing they will sing to have the inspiration of the lord and one of the hymns i chose this morning ladies and gentlemen is psalm 121 we are going to go through psalm 121 from the verse to 8 and we are going to look onto what the lord is telling us this morning hallelujah Today there is no solution, there is no drug, there is no vaccine, words of encouragement come from government officials, that's all they can give us. Our health ministers are pouring phrases of encouragement to the world, that's all they can give us. Friends and loved ones are exchanging words of inspiration and encouragement, that's all we can do. Whilst we are going to the Sunday school, my senior brother in Kumasi called me uh, on WhatsApp trying to know how we're doing and encouraging us. My family, I'm also encouraging them. That's all we can do. Men of God are doing their best to prove their calling with all scriptures. They are quoting all scriptures from the second book of Chronicles to the Psalm of Night. They are doing everything. They are doing that to instill peace to the hearts of the people of the globe. However, the fact remains that nothing, uh, none of these efforts is bringing real solution. The preaching, the, 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 the prophesies, the prophecy of people, the government officials coming out with figures, they are only, it's not bringing solution. People are dying every day. People are getting infected every day. So all these things we are receiving to now, nothing is bringing solution. But I think there is a solution. The only solution we have is in our Lord Jesus Christ. It's God who makes the heaven and earth. He's the only one who can come in and resolve this problem. This is the only one we can look into. The psalmist from the uh, uh, Psalm 121 is telling us that we should look unto Zion, the city of David, the city of protection. As we daily go on our knees, we are journeying on this path towards God, which is mentioned in the book of Job chapter 28, the verse 7 and 8. Each time that we come before God, each time that we, we kneel before God, is we are moving, we are climbing that tree, we are climbing that hill from Okepo, we are moving towards Bela, we are moving towards Mount Zion. And when we go to Mount Zion, we are going towards a place which God said in the book of Job chapter 20, the verse 7, which Dennis also mentioned yesterday, they said, there is a path. We are moving in that path. We are moving in that journey. Which no fowl knoweth. Which no vultures I have seen. Neither the lion's whelp have trodden in. The fierce lion passed by it. Just open to the book of Job chapter 20, the verse 7 to 8. Let's all read it together. Let's see together where God is taking us through. Each time we kneel before God. Each time we come before his presence like this, we are walking towards Zion, where there is our deliverance. We are walking towards Mount Zion, where there is a, a, a solution, where there is holiness, where there is sanctity, where there is healing. Job chapter 28, Job, Job, Job 28, the verse 7 and 8. I 
and waiting we all be there they will reach the game there is a path which no foul knows we are moving in that path which no enemy knows when you kneel before god when we come before him when we are worshiping together when we are fellowship together when we are talking about to children about the word of god we are walking in a path which no foul knows which the vultures i have not seen the devils i have not seen the eye of the enemy have not seen we are walking in that path the lion's work have not trodden there the lion was not able to move in that path the fierce lion passed by it but he could not see it ladies and gentlemen when we come before god let's know very well that we are moving towards a place we are we are gathering in a place where the enemy cannot touch us amen so we have to look unto the lord all the words that we are hearing from the professional from the politicians from the pastors from everything from today they are all this was they are like a like candles in the wind they light them and the wind of virus tear it off everything they said we don't see solution all these words of encouragement ladies and gentlemen they are words like candles in the wind when the wind of the virus blows those words have no value the wind of the virus attack people and kill them the only place that we can be safe is when we walk in the path towards zion when we our mind is on god when we know that it's god who can do everything so our mind always is meditating upon the word of god day in day out so we are walking in a path where no foul knows where no vulture has seen where no lion has trodden nor where any fierce lion has passed by that's Mount Zion. So when we are going, we lift up our, our eyes to the mountains. Let's go back to the book of Samuel 21. Let's take it two verse at a time. Good. Psalm 21. Here we are. Each time I'm receiving call. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From when comes my help? My help comes from Lord which made heavens and the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we only look onto the hill of Zion. As they are walking towards the pilgrimage they are walking towards this festival festivity what do they do as they are walking towards this festivity as they are climbing the hills they raise up this song i will lift up my eyes onto the hills that all everybody will be climbing and be lifting up their eyes towards where they are going where they know that deliverance will come from there they say from where is come my help so now we know that even us we are crying unto the lord pray unto the lord we know very well that our deliverance is coming from god verse 2 say my help comes from the lord which made heavens and the earth our help comes from somebody who controls the whole world as we know we know that god the, the, the earth belongs to god we know the scientists now begin to understand that the earth somebody controls it they understand that they have no power in anybody. They understand that only God can give you that wisdom which Daniel talked about in his book of uh, Daniel chapter 12. God is God who can give wisdom to men. So now everybody is helpless because we now know that help will come from only one place. And that one man is the maker of heavens and the earth. And everything therein. So our help comes from God. Hallelujah. I want us to understand this that look we do everything as they are asking us to do but let's put our mind on god if you have opportunity as we are talking about this morning that the lord has called us for a job if you have opportunity let this message goes out to people let people understand that it's god who can help let's put scriptures and encourage people 
and let's don't uh, I repeat again let's don't let's stop looking at funny things which does not actually help us they are only distracting our attention but let's go scriptures let's people understand this is a time for us to 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 blow the trumpet of the lord that he is the only one for everybody can see from the east and the west from the north and south that the whole world live helpless the mighty kingdoms are helpless the mighty uh, uh, powers of the world are helpless they are running helter skelter looking for gadgets god is the only one who can provide gadget god is the only one who can provide good things for us who can protect us when we walk in that path which there's no foul enough which no vultures i have seen the the, the path we are walking on the, the virus cannot see the lions will have not trodden there the 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 the, the, the fears of this uh, covid 19 have not seen that place yet that is the presence of God. That is the mountain of God. That is Zion. That is the city of David. That's the place where it is walled with walls that can never be broken by the power of our Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look unto the Lord. Now let's go to the verse 3. He will not suffer their foot to be moved. He that keep thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keep Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep hallelujah here we see that god never slumbers neither sleeps because he is on guard he's looking and watching over our life 24 7. our god our jehovah Ye jehovah has our back he watches over our lives day in day out sometimes you may pray and you see that nothing happened and you wonder if god is asleep at the wheel no he is not just because he hasn't answered your prayer the way you thought was the best doesn't mean that he hasn't answered your prayer at all god is always at work in around us he always has your best interest in his heart he is infinitely in love with us I will stand for us nothing less than your very best our very best we are looking for here is good health our very best we are looking for here is that he should protect us our very best is we are looking for over here is that god should watch over us watch over our children god is guiding us god sent angels to watch over us only we have no eyes to see them but i pray that one day as elisha told his servant that God opened his eyes. If God opened our eyes, we shall see how God loved us. How he sent angels to guide our innocent children. How he sent angels to guide us whilst we are snoring and sleeping. Angels are guiding us. Angels are real. Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to assure you that the Lord is not sleeping. He's not going to allow our feet to move or to sleep off. He is not slumbering. He is that who keep israel we are the children of god we are the israelites today god is keeping us safe so all that we want to talk about is just to hold on to him is just to have our mind on him today if i should give a topic ladies and gentlemen i'll say simple help comes from above i'm talking on the subject help come from above help is not on superficial help is not from anywhere we can admit it now that help is not coming from any other place but we are only looking onto the lord so i want to encourage you look unto the lord and the lord will be with you amen quickly go to the verse 5 to 7 part 1 behold the lord verse 5 the lord is their keeper the lord is their shade upon their right hand the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night the lord shall preserve thee from all evil remember this was a song sung by the pilgrims walking up to jerusalem can you imagine the hot dry sun beating down on you on the desert you are walking on all, all of us listen today we all come from a place where the sun is very hot just imagine that you are walking 
in a desert where the sun is about 40 degrees, 40, 45 degrees, and you are walking towards Jerusalem. We are walking towards Jerusalem. We are under pressure now. But God says this, that the Lord is their shade. God is going to cover us that we will not even see or feel the heat of the sun. So as they are walking, they say the Lord is their keeper. So they encourage themselves as they are making this journey, as they are pilgrimage to Jerusalem. This is a song they are singing. They begin to understand how the tree can be in a can form a refreshing oasis in the desert. On the other hand, the moon reminds as they walk in the night, the moon reminds them of the dangers of the night. Just imagine when we are walking, we should be walking in the night. Climbing those mountains from Okepo Superiore, Okepo Inferiore, going towards Gralia, where we want to call the name of the Lord. If it is the night, there are dangers around. There may be robbers around, there may be wild animals that, that cross the street. Here we can understand that no matter when we are moving, day or night, God will keep us from harm. He gives round the clock protection. All round the clock, God is protecting us. So like the early Israelites, we can also sing with confidence because God watches over us. God protects us and God is with us and we have nothing to fear. Ladies and gentlemen, fear nothing. There is nothing we can fear. Can you say with me the Apostle Paul, if God is for us, who can they be against us? In Romans 8 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? God is your protector always. He will watch over our life. Our ultimate security, our highest security for COVID-19 is from God. God will protect us from our regular flu virus, from every sickness and illness known to mankind. Our real security is only found in God. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't worry. He's the omnipotent God. The omnipotent Lord of the universe has declared his unending love, has, has declared his platonic love for you and will never fail you in protecting you. We know that bad things happen to good people. We know that death comes for us unless Jesus comes first. But even in that, God is protecting us. Hallelujah. Let our mind be with the Lord. Let us not get despised about what the Lord is doing. Let our mind, our help come from above. Our help is only in the Lord. He will not fail us. He will always be with us. Hallelujah. Let's go quickly as we are coming to uh, coming towards the end. Let's we are considering only the chapter verse uh, the Psalm 120, we are only considering this psalm. Let's see the seven, be, the seven again. The Lord shall preserve thee from evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The verse 8. The Lord shall preserve their going and their coming in from this time and even forever. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say amen. The Lord shall preserve. The Lord shall preserve their going out. The Lord shall be preserved their coming in from this time and even forever. The Lord is going to preserve us our going out. The Lord is going to preserve our coming in. He's going to preserve our going forth everywhere we go. The Lord is preserving us. The ver the, the part B of the verse 7 says, He shall preserve thy soul. I mean that he's going to preserve our way of thinking, our way of seeing, our way of hearing, our way of walking, whatever we are doing with our soul. God is going to preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve our going, preserve our coming, even forever. God is going to prevent us. God is always watching over you. Not in a negative sense. God is waiting for your trip up. I caught up with you. I knew you are going to go for that extra desert. We are going to move more the Lord. God is the most loving, the non-manipulative parent. He imposed no guilt upon us. God watches over us with the promise of his presence. Every word of God is the presence of God. The phrase, 
which we see in the verse eight, say coming and going. Uh, coming and going refers to that every day our flow of life. Certainly, God will be fast. In fact, God was with us. We know He made a way for us. We as immigrants here, we came here without any hope, but God has made way for us. Amen. We lost our jobs. We have nowhere to turn to. <coughs> we have nowhere to turn to. But God is able to make way for us. In every situation we have found ourselves, there is a judgment. God is there to make a way for us. In every moment of our lives, God is making a way for us. When we go to bed in the night, He is there. When we are walking on the street, He is there. His shaking glory is covering us everywhere we are going. If you are a believer, everywhere you go, the Holy Spirit goes with you. Hallelujah. Did you know she was quoting this, or somebody was quoting this yesterday? They said, Jesus made his disciples to know this from John 67. But very truly, I tell you, it is for you, your good, that I go away. Unless I go away, the Holy Ghost, the advocate, will not come. But if I go, I'll say him to you. The Holy Spirit, which is the advocate, which is the comforter, is always going with us. Because Jesus said, when he's going, he's going to send the comforter, the Holy Ghost, the advocate for us. And what is the work of the advocate? The advocate speaks for our betterment of a person. They fight for the person to get to what that person needs. Our advocate, who is our lawyer, who is our comforter, is going to speak for us, is going to protect us, is going to fight for us. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. We as believers, everybody who is in deal with the power of the Spirit, the advocate is for us. He fights for us. So that's why we should always be in the presence of the Spirit so that he can stand for us, so that he can speak for us, so that he can protect us. He's always that Jesus Christ, be an advocate, is always protecting for us. He said in the book of Matthew 28, 20, he said, I am always with you to the very end of age. He is talking to us. If you look up above, if you know that our helps come from him, if we don't look low, but we look above, when we move in the path of righteousness, the path where there's no vultures air, where there's no foul, where the lion, the fierce lion, they have not trodden over there. When we walk in that path, the Lord is going to be for us forever. He takes care for us, hallelujah, both now and forever. That means always he's there. Hallelujah. God protects us always. We belong to one who controls the whole universe because he's the maker of heaven's and the earth. So have no fear. No doubt that you are in a good hands. Why do we preserve in prayers then? We have to continue to pray. There's a need that we don't relax in prayer. There's a need that even the climbing of the hill towards uh, 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 towards uh, Zion, towards the city of David, towards Mount Zion, the hill, the, the climbing is high. Sometimes we get discouraged, but the Lord is going to strengthen us. But we have to continue. We don't have to lay down our, our, our tools. We don't have to get relaxed. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to walk in that path where there's no lion trodden. That path that is leading to Mount Zion. Let's continue to lead and pray on it. Daniel has set his heart. In the book of Daniel chapter 2, the verse uh, 1 and 2, we can see that Daniel set his heart on a vision that the Lord had given him. The Bible said that he had not eaten until three full weeks were fulfilled. The verse 12 and 13 says that the angels said, from the first day that you set your heart to understand, your words were heard, and he has come from his words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood him for 21 days, but Michael came to help him. I'm here to tell you that your prayers are being heard, and help is on the way coming. Hallelujah. Our prayer is our be heard. God is working out things for us. No matter what the enemy is fighting, he will never succeed. The angel told him for the first day, your prayers are being heard. But there was a battle in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, battle is going on in the world now. And God is going to preserve his people. So as we can see from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, that we should be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And we should put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the walls of devil. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, ladies and gentlemen, but we are wrestling against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in highly places. There's a battle going on now in the heavens. And ladies and gentlemen, the only tool we have now is to pray and continue to pray and because we know our help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a war that is taking place in our families, within our friends, within the church. But we are going to win this war because the battle is not for us. Just as God was talking to Jeho Jehoshaphat, he said the battle is the Lord. So God is telling us that help is coming from above. The battle is not ours. All we need to do is to hold to the great warrior who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Our great warrior is our God himself. He is going to fight the battle for us. Let us look unto the Lord. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer their food to be moved. He that keep thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keep Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is their keeper. The Lord is their shade upon their right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve their soul. The Lord shall preserve their going out and their coming in from this time forth, even forevermore, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.